segment we hope to become regular over the next few months as we're all uh, dealing with the global pandemic going on. Uh, we're lucky to have head coach Martin Inglesby of the uh, men's basketball team uh, live from his home in Wilmington. Coach, how are we doing? Good, Scott. Um, good to see you. I miss seeing, seeing you on the second floor of the Bob, um, but we're hanging in there, doing well, trying to stay healthy and stay safe and, and uh, not leave our house too much. So how are you guys doing? We're doing well. We're doing well, and uh, we're hanging in there. I'm sure. I know you've got four kids at home. I'm sure your mom probably more active than you were during the during the year. How how's everything for the family at the transition? 
Uh, things have been good, you know, trying to get used to this new normal uh, that we're living in right now, obviously unprecedented times for us, but we have four little ones at home, 10 year old twins, Will and Kate, and we have a five year old Jack and uh, almost three year old Ben. So, you know, Colleen has taken the responsibility of um, <clears throat> the online learning for the twins. And then I've well. done a good job playing zone. You've got against, four kids. Uh, ben and Jack over the last couple of days. But uh, yeah, it's been nice to, you know, get some quality time with them. You know, you don't take it for granted. And, um, you know, just being able to spend that time after the season and a little quieter for us uh, after a long time together with our group. So uh, we're doing all right. We're taking it day by day. And it's like Groundhog Day. I feel like you do the same thing every day. But, um, you know, so we're doing well. Are we drawing up any out of bounds plays with? You got the four kids and your wife, so it's five kids. You going five on O at all? No, but we did have a dunk contest in the morning uh, with the two little guys. I actually uh, threw some signs up and six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have a little trampoline down there. So our five year old Jack is is pretty good. He gets a 10 every time and he's trying to teach Ben some new dunks. But um, we'll definitely keep him busy and, and they're keeping me very active and busy. We got uh, we got almost over 50 questions submitted prior. And we'll have questions coming in during, hand, uh, during. so go ahead and loot, use the chat button there on YouTube, and we'll be sure to try to get Coach as many questions as we can. Um, coach, we'll, the first kind of, we had a couple questions about how you and your the program are handling this. Um, I know, obviously, this is a different type of year or time of year for basketball and the def basketball programs and some of the other programs that have dealt with this. But how are you and uh, your staff dealing with this time? Yeah, I mean, I think for us, you know, we had a finality to our season. So, um, you know, unfortunate loss in the semis against Hofstra, against a really good Hofstra team. We came home, and that's when everything really started to speed up. Um, had some opportunities to play in the postseason. Some of those events, obviously, were all, all canceled. And then our guys kind of dispersed and went home. So we gave them some time over the last couple of weeks just to get home and, and make sure they're safe and healthy, spend some time with their families. We actually had a, <clears throat> our first Zoom call um, learning these new features on this computer and all these functions. I, I'd rather sit in the locker room or, or uh, spend time with those guys in person. But obviously, these are the times we're in. So we you know, really just wanted to touch base with our guys so those guys could see each other. Um, you know, we got a really close-knit group. And you know, I, I feel for them because um, you know, these guys want to be able to experience um, you know, college and, and at the end of the season, get into a little bit of the off season to get back to work and on the court, but also just spend time with their friends on campus and they're not going to be able to have those opportunities. So, um, you know, just connected with those guys and, and great for everybody to see each other's faces. They went back and forth a little bit, really led with academics, you know, wanted to make sure obviously everybody's safe and healthy and they have what they needed at home. They have the support um, they need from our academic counselor, uh, Lou Beck. So Lou kind of led the meeting and we shared, um, you know, some different things with them, but obviously we have eight to nine weeks left of school and just really want those guys bunkered down, focused, and know that we're here for them if they need anything. And, and we'll keep in touch. So we have another Zoom call on Monday set up uh, for the guys, and we're just trying to take it week by week. Obviously, we're touching base with those guys throughout the week through text and, and phone calls if they need anything, checking in on them. But um, that's kind of how we – uh planned it so far just to have one call a week so everybody can get on a zoom and, and see each other and chat a little bit what's been the most challenging is it i mean this is the type of year this is the time of year that you guys kind of try to stay connected and really focus on the academic stuff how how have you been using those resources what's been the kind of the most challenging switch as far as program running a program for you yeah, I mean, I think the most important thing for us was, uh, you know, this break did come at a good time for us just to be able to get away. You know, we've been together a lot. We were together a lot last year from summer school to our trip to the Bahamas to preseason, and then you get the grind of the season. So I do think it was good for our guys just to be able to get home and spend time with their friends and family. Um, and we weren't going to get back into any basketball stuff till after Christmas. So I've really encouraged our guys to just really focus on their academics. And uh, our strength coach, Rich Levy, got um, uh, emailed the guys and was able to find out, you know, what equipment they had at home. So he's formulating, uh, had formulated some plans for those guys to be able to, you know, get some workouts at home. But, you know, I told them to just relax a little bit, take some time away, really focus on their academics. And then we'll slowly get back into some uh, some workout stuff. But, you know, for us, um, you know, the one area that that we're going to miss out on, which I think has been a great strength of ours as a basketball program, is skill development. 
you know, you want to give these guys some opportunities to recharge their batteries or get some reps after the season. But then we have about, you know, six to seven weeks of skill development where we're really not practicing, but we got guys one-on-one, two-on-two, and our coaching staff has done a fabulous job. You know, you get kids in your program and you make them better basketball players. And, you know, that's what you miss out on. And, you know, it's unfortunate times and situations for us. I know the guys are, you know, working at home, but, um, you know, we're hopeful. I'm, I'm always optimistic that, we're going to get them back sooner than later, but I don't think anybody knows. So, um, you know, that's what I really miss out on and, and those experience with, you know, helping guys improve as basketball players. Let's, let's go back and kind of look towards last year. Um, obviously coming off a great year with 22 wins, only the eighth time ever uh, with 20 plus wins, uh, a lot of high moments. Um, what, what do you guys as a program take away from last year? Um, yeah. You know, we love our team. Uh, I love the chemistry we have. The group uh, really was focused and worked extremely hard. And, um, you know, we had some ups and downs. We started off great. And we went 9-0 and to start the season. I think, um, you know, the best start to the season in the history of our program. And then we dealt with some adversity. We added a new guy at Christmas. Then we won on an unbelievable run at a really important time for us where we're searching a little bit in the early part of conference play. But, um, you know, we had a group that really believed in each other. Um, they worked really hard. Um, they enjoyed playing together on both ends of the floor. I think we felt, um, yeah, that we moved the program forward, but we still got a lot of work to do. But, you know, you always step back and want to appreciate uh, the experience. Uh, really thankful for our seniors and, and their leadership and Jacob Cushing and Colin Goss and everything that they meant to our program. Uh, and excited about next year's team. You know, we got high expectations. We're going to embrace those expectations. And that's the unfortunate thing with our group. You know, you're not able to get back to work. And I don't know when you're going to be able to get back to work to spend time with them. Uh, but, you know, our group was disappointed uh, losing to Hofstra. You know, we invested a lot heading down to the conference tournament, played a great game against Charleston, um, and wanted that to sting and wanted that to use, use that as motivation to get into the offseason to continue to improve uh, individually and collectively as a basketball team. So, um, you know, again, 22 wins, great year. We're excited about the future. I think we're moving in the right direction. We have one question from Joe from Dover, kind of asked uh, along those lines, but is this kind of where you saw the program and you're four years in? Is this kind of where you saw that after four years? Do you, when you take a job, do you kind of lay out, okay, this is where I want to be after year, year three, year four, that type of thing? Um, is this kind of where you picture yourself? I mean, I just think you want to continue to build your program and set a solid foundation. And for us, when we got the job, you know, we missed a whole spring recruiting period. We didn't have a whole lot of guys on the team. So I feel like, you know, we're going into year five, and in my eyes, it's really year four, because that first year was year zero with what we walked into. Um, and, you know, we've, we have an identity now, um, you know, we've developed a really strong culture within our program, and it took some time to get there and kind of established uh, what's important for us and the pillars of our basketball program. We've done a lot of great work as far as team building exercises off the court. And um, I think our guys understand the standards we've set, the expectations. Uh, so I couldn't be more excited about where we are heading into year five. Um, again, we have a lot of expectations. And I think our guys, um, you know, have warranted, warranted those expectations with how they've worked and, and, you know, how they've elevated this program and put this program back on the map. So, you know, we're excited about where we are, obviously not satisfied. Uh, we know there's still a lot of work to be done and hopefully we can get a chance to get back to work soon enough. Uh, Jeff from uh, Bear asked, um, do you guys track a specific stat or uh, do you guys use analy uh, additional like advanced stats? <clears throat> That type of stuff. What kind of yeah. tracking? Yeah, I think those analytics are metrics. Uh, my staff is educating me more and more over the years or what's important. Um, you know, for me on the offensive end, you know, assist to turnover is a really important stat or key for us. It's an area where I think we can be a lot better at moving moving forward. I believe this group was a little little more one to one. We want to be, you know, 1.2, 1.3 to one. Uh, you know, the three point line and obviously the three point line being moved back and the impact that that has on the game and teams and it's a great equalizer 
in our sports. Um, you know, offensive efficiency, defensive efficiency, you know, Coach Phillips and Coach Jones kind of spearhead our defensive um, side of the basketball as kind of co-defensive coordinators. And, you know, ball screen defense, offensive rebounding percentage, transition defense. There's a lot of things that we look at as we prepare for our opponents. Uh, we spend time, obviously, in preparation and scouting, but it's more what we need to do as a basketball team and program to be able to beat our opponent. That's probably what we talk about the most. Um, and, uh, you know, so we, we look at a lot of metrics. There's, I don't know if there's one that's most important to us, but as we put our scouting report and plan together, um, there's a lot of there's a couple of various variables that we look at. Looking, looking a little forward to next year, we got a couple of questions regard, asked, asking regarding recruiting. Um, obviously, the NCAA last night extended the, the recruiting period, uh, dead period through May 31st, kind of limiting interaction there. How does the recruiting – um, work for you? How, how does that affect what you're doing? Yeah, I mean, it's, um, you know, against it, it's different times uh, for everybody. You know, the dead period uh, has been extended to May 31st, and we're going to miss a whole April recruiting period for us as a program. And for everybody, it's a really important time to get out and evaluate talent. Um, we lose four seniors uh, after this season, so we have a big hole to fill. And I am not a proponent or fan of evaluating talent uh, or players that come into our program using video as the be all end all. So, you know, we've done a great job as a basketball program and, and a coaching staff as a testament to our assistants of evaluating players and being there in person to see the type of student athletes that we feel would be great fits for our program, not just on the basketball court, but, you know, also on campus and in this community. So, um, you know, that is something that we're going to try to fit, have to figure out and navigate through. I'm hopeful that at some point this summer we'll get a chance to get back out there and uh, evaluate the junior class because that's a really important class for us. If not, they're going to have to be creative in September to give us some opportunities to get out. And, um, you know, we get out quite a bit during the season, maybe not me as much as our coaching staff because, you know, I'm there for practice every day. But, um, you know, I, I think it's something that we're going to have to continue to talk about and evaluate as a staff because, uh, you know, 2021 is an important recruiting class for us. Obviously, we just said it's a dead period now, but how has how do you how does a season like when you have 22 wins and you you're on national TV against Villanova, you're in the semifinals? How does that help recruiting? How does that spark interest? For you? Well, I mean, I, you know, we, we have great momentum within our basketball program on the recruiting circuit, um, you know, around the country. I think, you know, it helps when you win and you play well on TV and, and you're really selling, obviously, the academic piece, um, you know, great academic institution. You want kids, you know, that want uh, that value their academics, but you know, they want to be a part of winning programs and winning cultures and they see the progress that we've made. Um, so there is a lot of excitement. There's a lot of excitement on the transfer wire in fifth years. And ah! that we're navigating, um, you know, day in and day out. You follow the Twitter and then transfer portal and you see how many kids are available. So just balancing that and trying to, um, you know, take advantage of that. I think that's something that, um, you know, we see and, and follow all the time. What, um, when you talk about recruiting, uh, you have two guys coming in with Andrew and Marco. Can you talk a little bit about what they bring to the table? Yeah, I mean, we're really excited about those two guys. Um, you know, they come from great high school programs. Um, they have high basketball IQs. They really know how to play. Both of them can make shots and shoot it from the perimeter. Um, and they're gym rats. Those guys are in the gym all the time. They want to continue to work on their game. They want to improve as basketball players. Um, you know, they're going to be great fits in our program. And I think both of them have a chance to have um, an unbelievable career and impact on us, uh, on our program when they get here. How do, how do you guys stay in touch with them this time of year? Um, this time of year is, is yeah, I think yeah. I mean, our coaching staff and and um, you know uh, myself check in with those guys on a weekly basis, whether it's through text text messages or you know <sighs> touch base right. and see what they're up to. Um, yeah, I talked to Andrew.
I see you, Brad. I see you. Here's Coach. Coming. It's 
Mario. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Coach, you might have Coach, down in the left-hand corner, I think you see there should be stop to start video. Try that. It was. Oh, yeah, yeah. Any of these uh, Tiger King, maybe we'll, maybe we'll blame that on uh, Carol Baskin, maybe. Uh, that You won't get that joke, but the rest of your okay, staff, yes. it sounds like. So, Coach, have you checked out the Tiger King yet? I have not. I've heard a lot about it, but, um, you know, maybe if I get some time. I'll have plenty of time in the last couple of weeks. I'm going to have to tune in to check to see what all this noise is about. <laughs> I tried to check it out the other night. Uh, Nate Edwards, their good friend back at the – uh, studio was not a huge fan of the fact that I didn't enjoy it, but maybe you will. <laughs> um, we were talking just yeah, let me know. Let me we were know. talking about kind of next year and um, how you guys navigate this type of year, uh, time of year. And you guys, obviously, the last couple of years have dealt with kids transferring, and obviously that's a hot topic. How do you guys kind of deal with that and try to stay in touch with your guys um, after you guys have such a good year? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, everybody wants to talk about recruiting. The most important recruits we have are the guys in our locker room. So, uh, you know, staying in contact with them. And, and obviously, we're, again, we're, we're in such a, a unique time and period right now. It's just that, um, you know, we're keeping in touch with them, making sure they know we're here to support them. They're staying healthy and safe at home. Um, and, and, you know, we have got dinged with the transfer wire the last two years um you know hopefully that's not the case moving forward for us but um you know the NCA is talking about this transfer waiver going through I think they pushed back the um vote uh, for a couple months and and you know for us at this level 
Um, I'd, be, I'd be naive to think that it's not going to have a significant impact uh, on programs like us at, at this mid-major level. And, you know, obviously we benefited from some transfers that are coming into our program. We've lost some guys that have gone to uh, different programs. So uh, I am not a fan of it, um, but I do think it's probably only a matter of time before it comes. And, and we're obviously going to have to adjust and react to it. How do you guys navigate that? Like you just said, you, you've benefited from the additions of Nate and Justin, but you've also lost guys. So how, how do you guys, I mean, there's positives and negatives. How do you guys deal with that at this level? Yeah, I mean, I think for us is, you know, it's all about our guys and developing relationships and, and hoping those guys uh, enjoy the experience and they have that opportunity. You know, I don't have a problem with a kid leaving your program that maybe there isn't an opportunity for and, and you can find uh, another school where they have a better opportunity to play. But, you know, when kids come into your program, you give them an opportunity, they have great success and and they all, uh, you know, kind of want more. So it is a two way street. I understand that. Um, and you know, it's something that our coaching staff talks about a lot and, and we're looking at the transfer portal to see if there's any kids that can come into our program that can help us. And, and, you know, just for our current guys that, you know, you're developing relationships that last really longer than the wins and losses. And those guys really enjoy their experience. They know that, you know, we have their best interests at heart. We're helping them grow, uh, from 18 year old, uh, you know, young adults into men by the time they leave here. And that's where our athletic department has done an unbelievable job, you know, giving these guys the resources that they need to be successful. Um, and some of the blue programming we have, we have a sports psychologist, we have a nutritionist, the investments that they made in our program. Um, you know, obviously the experience that we've had from going to the Bahamas, uh, to playing Villanova on national TV on a neutral court, playing a great basketball conference, you know, just hoping those guys enjoy that experience. And at the end of the day, you have that connection with those guys. Um, that, that, that goes way longer than anything on the basketball court. You kind of talked about it there and touched on it there, but how, I mean, you've been here four years now. How much have you seen this place grow resources wise? I mean, we haven't even touched on the Whitney coming in August for all the student athletes. What, how, how does, how does this place grown in your eyes? Well, I mean, it's leaps and bounds from where it was when we got here. Uh, we got you, Scott, you know, so <laughs> ecstatic to have you with us. We'll record that. Uh, you know, we have unbelievable leadership um, from Chrissy and great alignment from Dennis all the way down to Chrissy to our, our coaches, the assistant coaches. I think we've done an unbelievable job to bring this group together. And, um, you know, we got really, really uh, talented people working in important positions that have done a great job leading our group. So uh, it's a really fun place to play. I think we got unbelievable momentum as an athletic department, and it's really great and exciting place to work. As we look towards next year, um, we had a, a bunch of different questions come in about scheduling. What, mm -hmm. How do you guys approach scheduling? Obviously, I've been at two or three different schools at this mid-major level um, that have – it's just been, it's, it's really tough at this level. How do you guys approach that? Well, I'll tell you my first, one of my first staff meetings at Notre Dame when I was probably 23 years old. Um, was that just a few years ago, right coach? It was a while ago. <laughs> um, I went to the staff meeting. I never forget coach Bray talking about scheduling. And he said, and my staff, I've said this a million times to them, but the three most important things if you want to be successful in this profession is recruiting, scheduling, and recruiting. And he's like, never forget that. Obviously, you need really good players, but scheduling is so important. And I handled scheduling at Notre Dame for uh, eight years while I was there. And, you know, it's a little different at this level with what we're able to do and the resources we have. But I do think for me, it's always been about um, understanding your team and, and what your team can handle and also um, giving them some unique experiences and challenging them to prepare for conference play. And, um, and, but also um, being able to uh, give them confidence uh, heading into conference play. And you don't ever want to go in with, oh, we played this great hard schedule, but by the time you get to CAA play, you're a defeated group. So just trying to balance that. Obviously, we have a group coming up this season that you want to challenge them even more. And, um, you know, to, to, to maximize the home and neutral opportunities and not play as many true road games. Um, but, you know, a lot of the metrics uh, play into that as well. And the net and the quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, strength of schedule. I, I don't get as caught up in that. Um, 
for us at this level right now. I mean, those are important numbers, but for us to to be able to play more games at home is something that myself and Pat Rogers and our coaching staff really talk about. So um, excited about where we are. You know, next year we have five games on the books in the non-conference schedule at home right now hoping to maybe add one or two more. Um, we're working on finalizing details to play in a, another MTE down in Florida uh, against some really good teams, which I think will be an uh, exciting opportunity for us, similar to what we did this year. We're in discussions with a Big Ten team and an ACC team to, to go down there and play in their um, arena in, in a guarantee game. And then we have three more uh, games that we have, um, you know, to fill. So, um you know, my first year, we call a lot of people. We get a lot of calls back. We don't get as many calls back anymore, Scott. So um, something that we got to figure out and work with Pat and Chrissy and trying to see what we want to do. How difficult is it as you get as your program evolves? I was mm -hmm. at VCU. I was at Richmond, two teams that have had success, and I, I've seen that struggle firsthand mm -hmm. in the scheduling. As your team gets better and better, how difficult is it to schedule those bigger opponents? Well, I mean, it's a, you know, it's a two way street. So, you know, we could want to play a team and, and, you know, the team agrees to it, but you can't get a date to work out. They got a game there and it's a, it's a moving target. It's kind of putting a puzzle together, trying to figure out with work, what works for us. Obviously you have some events that are building, you're balancing volleyball, you're balancing women's basketball, how many dates we have at the Bob to be able to play home games. You got some football games early season. So uh, again, it, it's very fluid. Uh, Pat Rogers does an unbelievable job kind of mapping it out all for us. I can't tell you how many times I walk past your office to go down to see him. He's got it on his dry erase board. And I said, all right, what are we looking at right now? And he and I are texting almost every day, talking through scheduling and seeing what we want to do. So, um, but you know, um, again, trying to understand what your team can handle and challenge them, but also give them confidence heading into CAA play. Because for us, you know, I love to say we're a two or three big league, but in reality, it's really, really hard for us to get a second team in the NCAA tournament. So, you know, we want to be able to, uh, you know, challenge ourselves, but also have a nice record heading into conference play and seeing what we can do there to give us an opportunity to play in the postseason. How do you how do you try to find that balance? Obviously, with a with an older team next year, more experienced team next year. It may be a little different, but how do you kind of try to find that balance where you're playing maybe some harder opponents, um, but the confidence is – like, how do you balance that to make sure they're confident yeah. side, but also – Challenge. Yeah, I mean, I think you got to look at, you know, we get 13 opportunities in the non-conference schedule to play games. Uh, three of those this year will be in an MTE. We have five games that we um, kind of back end of home and homes. So you kind of know what they are. And then we have another couple opportunities to really challenge our group. So, you know, do you want to play? Um, you know, this year we played five games on a neutral court and that was to prepare us for what things would be like in the CAA tournament. Cause for us, you know, you got to go down there and win three games in three days. So we did that in our Orlando at the beginning of the part of the year. You obviously reference that with your group. How do you prepare? How do you turn the next page uh, to get onto the next play and, and prep? And um, but I think for us, it's you're just trying to navigate through it and figure out, um, you know, do I like where this game's scheduled? What do we think about this opponent? Is this too quick of a turnaround? How much practice time do we need heading into this game? So those are all discussions that we have within our coaching staff and bounce some ideas off of Chrissy. You know, the Villanova game came up um, based on a relationship with one of their guys, and we had to do it. It was a great opportunity for us to get out on national TV, play Villanova in their program. And, you know, I'm hopeful. And, you know, you got people in this profession, these third-party promoters, and you're reaching out to them to see if they have any neat ideas or any opportunities for us to be a part of that we can get out um, and be more visible. You mentioned the early season tournaments there. How, how do those kind of come together? Um, and how do you kind of look at which one works for you? Yeah, I mean, you know, there's a lot of them. Um, they've actually changed, uh, I guess, legislation's coming where it used to be four games. Now it's going to be three. And, you know, from my, uh, our experiences, you know, we hosted one. We went down to one in Orlando. Um, our first year we went out to Miami, Ohio and played in one. So, you know, just trying to figure out what works best for us. And um, I, I like taking our team to a little bit of a warm weather place, the one that we're working through this year is eight teams down in Fort Myers. That's, um, you know, it's tournament setting. So, you know, the team that wins gets to 
uh, cut down the nets, win a championship. It sounds like it's a you know pretty neat event. Northeastern played in it last year, so you're you're calling people that have played in the events before, and you're just kind of seeing what's out there. And you know, obviously, resources and money plays into it a little bit. We've had fluid conversations with Chrissy about what works best for us, and um, and and we're excited about this one that we're working through right now. We'll take one last look at kind of the last year with Chris submitted a question. What are your kind of uh, you and your staff's biggest takeaways? Uh, from this past year? Well, I mean, I, you know, <clears throat> it was a really fun group to coach. Um, it was a fun group to go to practice with every day. I do think the group uh, really grew and developed and, and moved our program forward and, um, you know, led by our older guys. And I think Nate and Justin and, and that group that are going to be seniors this year uh, really grew into great leaders. So we're going to rely on those guys you know, hopefully we have a little more of a player led team than a, than a coach led team. And I think those guys have really embraced that role and, and know that that's the expectation for us heading into next year. But, um, you know, 22 wins, um, you know, I think it was, again, it was, a, it was a heck of a journey. It was an unbelievable ride. We wish we had the opportunity to, 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 to win a championship down at the CAA tournament, but we had a, a lot of great moments within our basketball program. And, and so many guys, you know, it wasn't just one guy. I mean, so many guys stepped up throughout the season. You could go down the list. I mean, I think about, you know, uh, Jacob Cushing uh, making that shot against Eli. Maybe the biggest shot of the season for us, because if we don't get that game, we're two and five in conference play, and we're heading to Hofstra and Northeastern, the hardest road swing in our league. And who knows what direction the season would have went. So, um, you know, so many guys stepped up. They made big plays. Um, I think they represented our program. Um, you know, first class manner on the basketball court and in the community. And, um, you know, really thankful for this group because, you know, they uh, they helped put this program back on the map. What do you guys, obviously you guys enter every off season with kind of areas you guys want to focus on and improve. What What are maybe a few that you've taken from last year that you guys want to kind of focus on? Well, I mean, I think for us, um, you know, two sides of the ball, obviously offensively, we touched on a little bit earlier, you know, just being better with the basketball. Um, I think we're, we have a higher basketball IQ, we're better passers and we're better decision makers than we showed at times, um, a little more of a, again, we had a one-to-one -one assist to turnover ratio and, you know, just being a little more consistent on the offensive end. We had, we finished second in the conference in scoring, second in the conference in offensive efficiency, but we also had some lulls and lapses where, it's hard to get into the 60, you know, into the 70s scoring the basketball. On the other side of the ball, you know, I do think we got to be better defensively. We got to be more consistent. We got to be able to rebound the basketball. Um, you know, uh, our defensive efficiency on that end has to get better for us to be able to, you know, make an even bigger jump next year. So that's something that we're going to hopefully get back to work on as we get back to, uh, you know, workouts and practice, whenever that may be. But, you know, we uh, we know we got a lot of areas that we can improve on moving forward. You kind of mentioned it there, but how how nice is it for you as a coaching staff to have a senior-laden team? You guys have had some pretty young teams and pretty relied on some pretty young guys in your first three or four years. How How nice will it be? And especially when you mix in all the guys who have graduated from the CAA, when you throw in Nathan Knight, all the guys from Hofstra, yeah, Charles, how nice will it be to have that senior leading group? Yeah, I mean, it's it's really nice as you build a program to have older, experienced guys that have been through it and have been a part of it. You know, you think about the team last year, Kevin and Ryan Allen played a lot of minutes in college basketball for us. And then you had uh, Dylan Painter, who really only played half a semester for us. And then Nate and Justin Mutz were guys that this was their first go around in our program and in the CAA. So there's going to be a uh, a comfort level next year for us in the non-conference and just our routine and how we work and how we practice. And I, I do feel we have an older group that has set unbelievable expectations and standards with how we work. And you got those older guys that know our system that are teaching the younger guys. Um, they kind of pull those guys and lead them along. So that has taken some time to get there. We really try to develop and nurture that leadership out of those old guys. But when you have an older group that's been through uh, the ups and downs of a season, um, you know, you, you kind of lean on them and, and get those guys on the right track and hold those guys accountable, which is obviously my job. But, um, you know, again, we're, we're excited about the future of our program, I'm excited about this group next year. Well, uh, there's plenty of opportunities to kind of secure people for secure their tickets. 
Uh, season ticket memberships are now on sale. Uh, $25 a seat. You can kind of get them through the ticket office, bluehens.com backslash tickets for anybody listening who wants to grab tickets and secure. Whenever we get started sports again, people are going to be itching for sports so they can get their tickets. Coach, uh, speaking of tickets, we, we saw in those last couple games at home, how powerful is it when you have that, when you look up, when you come out of the locker room three or four minutes before tip and you look up and you see a jam-packed bottle? When I got here, I remember so many people saying that, uh, you know, when Coach Bray was here or the team that went to the NCAA tournament in 2013-14, you know, the energy in this building, you have an unbelievable alumni and community that really wants to support your team and program. Uh, you just got to win. So it helps when you get um, that excitement back. You, people are proud of the way the team plays on the basketball court and the energy that they give and how they compete. So that was really exciting to be able to see that energy. Obviously, we have a unique academic calendar, but to see that at that Hofstra game, you know, almost sold out, the students were there, you know, our guys were excited to play in an atmosphere like that and you feed off their energy. Um, so hopefully we can get that, generate that support heading into next year. Again, everybody buy those season tickets. It's an exciting group. We look forward to it. Get out there, it'll be back, hopefully be back sooner than later. And we're back out there competing next season. Again, that season ticket deposits are just $25 a seat for next year. Coach, uh, that's bluehens.com backslash tickets. Coach, I appreciate the time tonight. Obviously, we had to fight through a little bit of press, maybe a little bit of adversity there in the middle, but we got through and uh, certainly appreciate you taking time for us. Well, thanks, guys. Good to see you, Scott. Uh, I, 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 I'm okay being the guinea pig and trying to get the kinks out as some of the other coaches get on here, but you know, hopefully everybody's staying safe and healthy out there, being smart, and you know, appreciate the opportunity. Good to see you. Yeah, absolutely, Coach. And like Coach said, this will be an uh, ongoing feature. We'll have uh, many of our coaches throughout the athletic department here jump on. And we'll be live chatting as we kind of all get through this together. And as Coach said, uh, Blue Hens fans, stay safe, stay healthy, and we appreciate your time. All right, Scott. 